Praise Priscilla Harding by the will of God. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we just honor you. We worship you. We love you. We adore you. We exalt you because you are holy and you are righteous. And your spirit indwells with us. And it changes our life. Oh, if people would keep their relationship individually with you, then they can receive the impartation of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because you are excellent in all your ways. Bring forth your message that you continue to proclaim. Morning, night is insignificant. You're the same God of creation. Your name Your name is above all. Your name exalts. Your name declares. Your name establishes. Your name proclaims. Yes, God. Your name is higher than all names. All institutions, all organizations, all man-made ideologies, philosophies, because of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Bible says, Abba, Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Jehovah Salaam, the God of peace. El Elon, the God of the Most High. Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. El Roi, the God that sees you. Jehovah Roi, the God our provider and provides as a shepherd. Jehovah Nisan, the God is a banner, the mighty warrior. Yahweh, God who saves, who rescues, and provides. El Olam, the name that emphasizes eternal. Emmanuel, God is with us. King of kings, the God who brings justice and peace to the world. Our creator, our living God. Yes, our father, Abba, who provides, who brings peace, shalom. who has the most high. The Bible says the angels cry, holy. Yes, our shepherd, the God who sees, El Roi. Some of you are worrying about everything and everybody. But it's the God that sees. El Roi. See, I don't get into people's personal lifestyle. I'm called by God to proclaim the gospel. And you either receive from God or you don't. And some people have their own agenda. And I'm not a part of their agenda. That's why they put their selves injecting in it and pull others. El Roi is the God that sees you. I'm only concerned about El Roi, the God that sees me. Because that's who I am accountable to. The name that's above all names. 
that the angels sing, holy, holy. And the angels sing, holy. Let the earth proclaim, holy. Holy forever, your name, your name, your name, your name, Lord, your name, your name, your name. Let the earth proclaim holy and the angels sing holy. Let the earth proclaim holy to the king of kings holy. Yes. What a mighty time of worship to the El Roi, the God who sees you. If you would please turn with me to the writing of Psalms 118, 8 through 9, it reads It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence and humanity and man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in print. While we can take these scriptures And allow God to meditate in our minds and heart. We can surmise that God is speaking to his people in the Psalms, inspired by God, which is penned as a thanksgiving of praise. a celebration after victory. That they believed that this was composed for the use of the Jewish festival of Passover. You see, the Psalm reflects on God's steadfast love, salvation and the importance of trusting in God rather than relying on human. To rely on human is when someone tries to dictate the ministry that God is birthing for you when they don't even know the vision God is given. To rely on human is when someone tries to take you back to where you were at, when they have no godly wisdom that God took you away. And there was a reason. To rely on godly wisdom is when people get your resume Look over your experiences, your volunteer and paid work objective, and then try to intervene themselves in it, thinking that your resume has something to do with people helping and doing and interject themselves into something that is delusional. It's a deception to rely on humanity is to take the messages that God gives and you become delusional thinking that someone has you personally on their mind. God's messages are normally prophetic to the body of Christ to learn from the people in the Bible's examples that you can relate to everyday life. 
That's why Bible study is necessary. In addition to Sunday school, in addition to Sunday services. For those who want a deeper understanding of what God is saying in this moment, his word is timeless. It does not change. He's not changing his standards, his holiness, nor is he changing his interpretation. That's why it's better to trust God rather than relying on human cognitive ability and or strength. To trust in the Lord emphasizes a central theme of the psalm. Most of the psalmists learned to trust in God. They never made this about light-skinned dogs and short and tall, big and small. That's the way the world operates. But the body of Christ operates on El Roi. The Lord that sees you, that we might be pleasing and acceptable and his sight above humanity's sight. That's why we don't put our confidence on what we can do, what we can illustrate, what we can organize. And you will always have people that interjects, can't handle the consequences and the ramifications and want to try to change God's course. You can't change God's course once you enter into his course and he begins to reveal to you. It has to take its course. That's what judgment is about. That's why you take God serious at everything he does. First, it's about somebody seeing somebody. Now it's about me seeing somebody. Nobody has time for that. You're in delusion. Because El Roa is greater than you. And the Bible says, don't put your faith in confidence in humanity. There's a reason for that. Humanity can take God's message and change it. Humanity can take God's will and edify his will over him, God. And if you follow humanity, you are not following God. You have to follow God as humanity follows God. And we've had so much to happen in the body of Christ from the pandemic to other personal agendas that if you don't follow God, you'll be lost. And the pandemic was a humbling experience for all, even clergy, because they no longer had the accolades of humanity when you could not come together. And a state law prohibited the gathering. And just because a state law prohibited the gathering does not make the state higher than God. For the government shall be upon his shoulder. And not the other way. The Sabbath was made for humanity. And not the other way. God is the Lord of the Sabbath. And God ultimately determines 
what you can become, what you can do, not people or association. And I don't have government agendas. I don't do the laws. I honor the word of God. So whatever the laws are, if you have a problem, with them, take them up with your government official. I'm not in that. I have no agenda. And I don't appreciate being pulled in other people's agenda. I'm not trying to get anything. I'm minding my business. So I don't get into what somebody else is doing. I'm not your Hollywood. Not impressed by Hollywood. I've been exposed to some Hollywood people. They're regular people. That need the Lord as well as anybody else. And if they can handle the Hollywood lifestyle, so be it. But I don't see it as being attractive to me. I see it as an area that many become lost and absorbed and confused and accepted. Not because they care about these people, but they see these people as a dollar sign. That's why the Bible says about giving seats to those who you think should have preferential treatment. God is just doing that to warn us. That's all God is saying. He talks about that in the writing of James. James 2, 1 through 4. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring and God good, goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to them that wear the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in gold place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? The Bible tells us to avoid favoritism based on external appearances and to treat all individuals with equal respect and kindness. He doesn't say to compromise the word of God. He says to treat everybody with respect and kindness. He doesn't say to compromise. His holiness. He doesn't say to compromise his standards. He doesn't say to compromise and accept the word. We are to focus on principles of love, humanity, and justice rather than specific attire or wealth. You see, to fully get an understanding of what was going on, you have to understand the background. Of the culture. 
of why the apostle James in this writing. Now, this is not about books versus experience. Let's not get into people's personal agendas because God has a purpose and will for everybody's life. And just because some people may have made bad choices and they want to feel better about the situation they're in because of the bad choices they made and brag on experiences. Not everybody wants your experience. They'd rather have their experience with God that precludes some of the experience based on bad choices. And Jesus didn't have to go through some of your experiences to impart Holy Ghost knowledge and wisdom. So don't fall for incorrect theology, ideology, and philosophy. James is addressing the issue of favoritism within the Christian community. We know that James was the half-brother of Jesus who became a very prominent leader in the early Christian church in Jerusalem. The letter is often considered a practical guide for Christian living, emphasizing the importance of faith and works in a believer's life. He's addressing the early Christian congregations were instances of individuals were showing partiality of favoritism based on external factors such as wealth and social status. There are many churches that have Hollywood people who are just regular people who you might see in different platforms. They make movies. They do plays. And I'm not going to name name because it's not a specific person. They do talk shows. They're philanthropists. And some dress very wealthy and some dress as if they have no money. but they are very wealthy. And some may come into the body of Christ and people treat them differently because of the wealth that is associated with them. Now, that's not to say that you don't honor some people that come into the presence or acknowledge them there. But the Bible says not to show individual partiality or favoritism because of their social status as well. But believers are to treat all with fairness and not to show preferential treatment to the well. How can I say this? I was at a body of Christ ministering for several years. And there were some particular people who did not have great wealth. To me, they may have felt I was wealthy. When you don't have, you think others as having so much more because you're comparing yourself with those who have. And you don't know that some of them are struggling just as much as you are. They just have different struggles. But I wasn't struggling. But anyway. So I would access this person to show me how to get to certain places.
and we would communicate. And I would learn about this person, more than one, experiences in life, the choices that was made, the past that was led towards destruction and how they were turning their life around. But those who felt they were on so much superior level, not because they had wealth, but because of who they were trying to attach themselves with, that really didn't have wealth. They're working, trying to hold on to what they got like everybody else is. And sometimes people will attach themselves to for the wrong reason, as opposed to attaching themselves to God. You never use a platform that is used for God to have people to draw for attachment of worldly things. Because when you do that, you mislead and guide them into thinking that that is what the body is all about. And so they will enter into the ministry for the wrong reason. Not because they love God. We saw that with Jesus. Many didn't come because they loved the Lord. They came because they wanted the materialistic things that they felt he could give that others gave in the world. They wanted him to be a king, to provide for them according to worldly things. Now we know the Bible says wealth is a defense and so is wisdom. And we understand we need money to live, to survive. Everything requires money to re obtain. Unless you're dependent on institutions that's giving you stuff, but you have to realize they're really not giving you anything. They're not giving you anything of theirs. They're giving you what we worked hard for, paid into a system. But that's neither here nor there. And so I learned this person's experiences and choices. Very nice people. I, I really enjoy fellowshipping. And they were curious. You would spend time with us, but others turn their nose up, criticize, talk about you and then act like they're so righteous when they're being presented. Why are you different? And I would tell them, why should there be a difference? Your lifestyle was just different. You made choices that I did. And so you experience some things that I would not have. I don't put certain things in my vessel. That had nothing to do with God. I just never put certain things in my vessels. I don't take a pill every time you get a headache. So I didn't become dependent upon pills. For every time something happens, you twist the ankle. I don't take a pill. I rest my ankle and soak it. I'm not one for prescription drugs or over-the-counter drugs for every time something happens. That draws you to addiction. You can't sleep unless you take a pill. You can't wake up unless you take a pill. You can't deal with life unless you take a pill. And you find yourself addicted. And sometimes doctors make you addicted. They write a prescription for everything. And never take you off. If I, if I have high blood pressure, I just stop eating salt. 
and potato chips and other things that could push up your pressure. If it's based on people agitating you, I stay away from the agitating and do fun things that I enjoy. Every individual is different. You have to learn what your triggering points are in life. I don't let people substantiate me. I don't let people drive my happiness or my joy. I don't need you to be joyful. I can be joyful all by myself. I'm not dependent on humanity. I'm dependent on God. There's a difference in when you establish your dependency. That's why the Bible says in his word about trusting in the Lord and not putting your confidence in humanity. For humanity is vulnerable. They can fail you. And so James was writing about how these people were often treated because they were perceived as being people of wealth. And so sometimes you'll treat people of wealth because undermindingly you want some of their wealth. You want to be associated with them. You want them to do something for you. That's why sometimes wealthy people don't want to deal with other people. And you think they're uppity up. You think they're mean and evil and wicked. No. They work some to accomplish their wealth. And others think they're entitled to what they work to accomplish when you weren't there. You were making your choices to do whatever you wanted to. And so you'll have one side always thinking people need to give their wealth. Well, they have all their money. Why did they do this? Why don't they give this? Why don't they do that? If they gave you all their money, they wouldn't have nothing. Because everybody always have their hands out. That's why many get pulled into what they get pulled in. They think they're going to get rich. They think they're going to get some money. So they'll navigate and attach themselves to people that don't even have the same direction that God is taking you. And you're driven by the wrong motive fact. And that's how some led down paths that destroyed their life. And they never reached the pinnacle of what they were pursuing. Wealth is fine, but without godly knowledge, it's destruction. And some wealthy people are not happy. They can't live their life because everybody wants something from them. All their family members want something. And they think they're supposed to finance them for everything they want. Hell, their family member will turn against them and try to take their will and think they're entitled to their will. That's the way of the life. And so you'll see a multiplicity of documents criticizing wealthy people. They didn't do this for the community. Then you'll have some door for the community. That's their business. That don't mean you got to do it. And some of them do it because they need a tax right on. So they'd rather give it away as opposed to Uncle Sam take it. And that's the reality of life. But not all. Some are different. Some love to give. But that's their money. And they have a right to handle their money however they want to. And no one has a right to tell them they have to give. And we have built a generation of wannabe Christians because they're under wrong theology and ideology. They're in a worldly philosophy and have a worldly feeling that people are just supposed to give you and I. 
Come to Jesus and you'll get this. Come to Jesus and you'll get that. Come to Jesus and you'll get that. Jesus didn't say that. When he came and ministered, the Bible said he didn't even have a place to lay his head. He's so busy ministering to a multitude. He didn't ride in the most expensive chariot. He didn't wear the most expensive adornment of clothing and attire. He didn't just sit with the high royalty. They didn't want him. And they quite often criticized him because of those who he did conduct himself with. Real people going through real life situations. And so those who were sincere about him learned the reality that always what you're seeing and pursuing wealth is not going to necessarily make you happy. Some lives were destroyed over wealth, over obtaining it, and over trying to obtain bad choices, paths of destruction. There's nothing wrong with wealth. That's not what God ever said. But wealth without wisdom is destruction. Godly wisdom. And so you have a generation think they can just pay. And not invest. Not labor. Not receive righteous man. And so when you have the wealthy that comes into the body. And there's nothing wrong with them coming to the body of Christ. They can receive the Lord too. But let them have a chance to receive the Lord. Don't make them your Lord. And sometimes people will make people their Lord, not even if they're wealthy. If they have an anointing on their life. You'll begin to worship them instead of God. And you have to let people know. I'm human. But God isn't. You can thank God for my messages. I've received a lot of comments. And I haven't got a chance to get back to the people, but I do pray to them. Some ask me to pray about things that they're going through that I preach about. I don't know them. But they're beginning to see what God is revealing to them. Some pray for other reasons. Healing. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Other concerns they might be going through. And as God gives the message, then they're able to receive because God is allowing them to receive because they are desiring to know truth from God. And the ones that I was able to respond to last year, I didn't have time this year or, or, or the year before last. I would tell them, thank you. Just pray for me. I'm just a vessel by grace used by God. So don't ever edify me. Just thank God for me. Like Paul thought God for those who were following God's will. I thank God for you. He didn't edify them because God is to be edified. We're just to be thankful unto God that God can use to pour out and to those life we want to receive. We all have different ministry types, ministry presentation types, but the same role. We all have different social economics, but the same law. And so you cannot get jealous of those who may have been more prosperous 
in their ministry. We don't know why Abraham was prosperous and Lot wasn't. Other than God chose Abraham. We don't know why Solomon was prosperous and David was prosperous. And others weren't. We don't know why God chose Mary. And not Elizabeth. That's God's doing. And he knows what everybody can handle. We don't know why some was able to go down paths of destruction. And then God turns them around. And they're more appreciative of God than some others. And these people I were dealing with were more appreciative of God. But then they were being lured, drawn by things and not God. And I would always remind them, keep your heart pure before God. All those things will be added. He never promised those things. The church may have, but he didn't. The lines you stand in to get money may have promised those things. He did. And I'm not criticizing people's way of their raising money. That's the between them and God. You don't like it, don't participate. But don't go with false perception. Trust God. And do for the right motives. Because God has enough to go around for everyone. So keep your eye on El Roi as El Roi keeps his eyes on you. That's how you stay rooted and grounded. And so when these people were coming into the body, there's some I melt met that were Hollywood people. I call them Hollywood. I'm not going into names. And you can see some people treat them differently. They'll push me to side to kiss up to them. And I would just look. You would see what they were about. Attaching themselves to those who they think has money, which means they only attach themselves to you in the first place. And because they attach themselves to whoever they think got more than you, to whoever comes around. And you'll see it. And as I communicate with these people that were Hollywood, some of them were not as happy as they portrayed. They had issues, they had concerns, they had disappointments, they had a lot of things, but they did not have love. They did not have friendship. They did not have trust. They had trust issues. People were always around them for what they could give. But not because they cared. And they would attach themselves to me because I never was there for them. I wasn't impressed. And I was sincere about God. And they were somewhat perplexed. You don't want anything from me. No, I don't. What is there to want? I'm actually learning about Hollywood from you. as you confide and speak. I didn't know it was such a cutthroat industry. I didn't know it was such a controlling industry. As I grew up as a child and watched the movies and watched the programs on television, I listened to different plays. 
I thought the life was glamorous. I didn't know the young actors, many of their lives led to destruction. I didn't know so much went on behind the scene that no one could communicate because no one would believe because money could cover and control and groom and entangle. Even in the music industry, you hear these songs, you see these people and you think they've made it. I didn't know that most of the money they didn't get. Whoever signed them, whoever owned the record label, owned them. And until they started speaking out, I didn't understand. When they died broke, I didn't understand they died broke because they never had the money. It was a facade. And some of them will tell you today, don't look at me as money. I don't have it. Many of them went in foreclosure with their home. It wasn't that they didn't spend their money right. They didn't have it. They bought thinking they were going to get. Not understanding the contract, the negotiations. Not understanding that there will be a pandemic to come and no one could entertain you. There was no venue you could pay and come and be entertained. There would be no churches you could come and be ministered to. So the entire world saw a flat of wealth. You can no longer control it and depend upon it. Do not put your faith in princes. Do not put your faith in wealth. Don't put your confidence in humanity or princes and wealth because it's not guaranteed. Trust in the Lord. And so these adults that I'm dealing with and they're telling me about the kids that were in Hollywood some of them were kids and grew up. I was shocked. There's a hidden side we don't know. Once they're out of the eyesight of humanity, you don't know the trials and tribulations they went through. It's no longer in the media. The royalties they're not getting that they should have been. And even some felt the downfall of the internet. You can get all of this music and pay nothing. When before you had to buy their CDs, you had to buy their tapes. You can listen to radio and get all their music. That's why you can't put your faith and trust in humanity or princes. You can't put your faith and trust in wealth. That's why the Bible says, be careful of how you treat people and do things to obtain. Now, God is talking to believers because he knew wealthy people were coming to the Bible and their wealth is not coming from the church. And when they come into the body, you will treat them differently for their wealth. And you will not be concerned about their soul because you will accept everything to not offend them for the wealth instead of telling them truth about their soul. And even some people have realized that. You don't want to speak truth. Because you'll be offended, they won't give you. So you'll elevate them.
as the world elevates them. And many will never change their life. When they came there for something different, to be drawn by a holy and righteous God, to know truth, but you'll treat them just like the world. And some will live continuously just like the world. Rich or poor. And some people, you can't tell them nothing because they're getting everybody's stuff and make it about what they're into that nobody's into. Hollywood has been coming to churches for years. Some people just associate with them. They're in the field that they're associating with Hollywood people. They're normal people. They're just in different venues, different settings. And some have been called by God. And so God has to work with them. And so the Bible that's written to believers saying, for believers not to do that when they come among you. Because God knows if they're coming there to be drawn by God, if they're coming there to receive truth by God, then don't treat them the same way the world treats them. Based on what they have. Based on what you think you can get from them. Treat them with the respect and love of God. Give them the truth. And let them make their choices. That's why you can't deal with everybody. Because once they've made in their mind what their personal agenda is, they will try to put their agenda on your life and have no knowledge what God is doing. Be concerned about El Roi seeing you. Be concerned about seeing El Roi, the God that sees all things. Now, not only are we to trust in the Lord, we are to know that human has a fallibility. They're humans. While individuals such as princes that we have and other nations of great wealth, they have their issues too. Everybody want to be in their regime for their money. And the next person ready to take them out to get their wealth. Leaders go through the same thing. They may have influence and authority but they are not infallible. God is telling you. They can be here today and gone tomorrow. They can be in integrity today and be in corruption tomorrow. If you put your faith and confidence in what you have. 
You'll do whatever you can to keep it and do whatever you can to get it. That'll be your motivational food with no standards, no morals, no values, no boundaries from the kingdom. That's why God says you got to rely on God's strength and wisdom so that you're not misguided by human strength and human wisdom that is fallible and shall soon to exist. Trust in the supremacy of God. Trust in the foundational principles. Faith and guidance in God, his providence. He secures you. He endures you. He gives you perseverance. Don't rely on human capabilities alone. There's a lot of scandalous things going on. Everybody trying to get stuff on everybody to control, to manipulate, to destroy. Because we live in a world that you got to pull down somebody to elevate yourself. Because there's no room. But God's kingdom doesn't operate like that. God's kingdom is immeasurable. And we don't operate like, like the world in God's kingdom. Only in worldly kingdoms. And some of those worldly kingdom practices will overflow into the body of Christ. Because they'll keep those same mentality, which means the change has not came from God. Because true change that comes from God does not keep the worldly mentality. That's why the Bible says, if you are new creation, old things have passed. New things is made in God's holiness and righteousness. That's a change. You put off the corrupt, the deceitful, the self-will. And anybody you keep hearing about their will, that what they want, they have not put off the old. It's an illusion. It's a facade. There is no change. Because righteousness and true holiness is God's will. That's why God says, be very careful how you are drawn to those for the wrong motives. And watch those who are drawn to others for the wrong motives, because they'll do it to you. To try to achieve and accomplish. From people as a God. That's why God says you don't do that. Now, isn't this interesting? He's talking to believers in the body. Anybody preaching other than Bible is not preaching God's message. You can relate it to today's society, but it has to be founded on the biblical interpretation of God's word.
That's why Jesus said we don't preach self. We preach. Paul said we don't preach self. We preach Jesus. And the examples he laid before. Let El Roi see you. Let El Roi be seen and magnified in your life. Because if you put your faith in seeing people, you're going to be disappointed. It's too much humanity and not enough divinity. That is all of them and corruptible and self will. Better to put your trust and confidence in God. That's why you don't fall for their plans and plots. It doesn't work. Because you're under superiority of divine body. The superiority of divine body. Now, when God talked about the wealthy coming into the body or the poor not treating them based on what you think they can do for you socioeconomically, it's because he knows the foresight that you don't have. Now, I'm not trying to do anything for anybody. I'm just obeying God. And I thank God for those who made much comment that I don't know. About how the messages are changing your life and getting you to think more about God and what is pleasing in his sight than humanities in this world. That you are truly accepting the risen Savior and not putting your confidence in humanity over God. You're not being led and controlled by humanity. And God can work with you because you're open to God. That's why many came to Jesus and couldn't stay. They weren't coming for the right reason. They were coming because they heard about Jesus' superiority. And they wanted to attach themselves with Jesus to make themselves feel superior. They wanted to get from the world from Jesus. When Jesus had deeper spiritual revelation that would last a lifetime that they could not receive. They had their priorities wrong. And so they could not receive. So let me bring this to close. Those people that I was around, some were very wealthy and some did not lack wealth. And I never treated them differently, neither one. I just learned how each are. And they both, from the rich to the less rich, found me very peculiar. Because I wasn't interested in the rich money. And I didn't treat the poor differently than how I treated the rich. Why should I? If I want something, I go to God. That's a difference. And who you put your confidence in. Humanity or God, that's who you go to. And so, 
I learned how some of them go through similar situations as the poor. And they would say, some people only want to come around because they want my money. And you will see articles. Why don't this person donate this? Why this person don't give this? Why this person don't give that? And you don't want to be around people that always have their hands out. Because you labor for Jews. And you're not entitled to give anybody anything. And then you have this false theology in the church. You're supposed to take everything you got and give it to others that didn't labor, that don't appreciate the what little you do. And they only coming because they see what you have and think they're going to get it. But they ain't coming for God and they don't see the behind the scene work that God was doing with you that had nothing to do with church to get it. They want your anointing. They want your lifestyle. But they don't want to sacrifice with your God. They don't want your God. They just want what they think he can give. And then some of y'all have become the same thing. And that touches the heart of God. With the knowledge that you don't want him. You just want what you think he can do. That Satan will give you. You have to want God for what Satan will never give you. The truth. Love, mercy, grace, and justice, and righteousness. He has not those attributes. That's why he's a fallen angel. The same way humanity will fall. If an angel can fall, humanity can fall because angels were created higher than humanity. That's why the Holy Spirit is necessary. And if, this, and if it's the Holy Spirit's working, how can you give humanity credit for what only God can do? Be careful how you give humanity credit for only what God can do. You're delusional. You're dishonoring God. You're putting humanity over God. You're putting your trust in humanity over God. And you're not designed El Roo to see you. You're designed humanity to see. And you'll never get from God what you could get. If you're seeking humanity. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Let's bring this to culture. I used to work at a very large company. I don't particularly care about small businesses. It's not my thing. I've been with a large company all my life. And you do get comfortable with where you've labored at that has allowed you to be successful and many different principles. That's just a natural propensity of humanity. And so in that large business, I was blessed to be able to move from different position to different position. So I could not get bored. I went from facilities to networking and instructing 
to supervise and program to project management all within the same company. But it wasn't my choice. It was God's path. Because God has a purpose and will for everyone. And until you put your eyes on Jesus and let El Roo see and watch over you, you'll never know your purpose and your will. You'll always be designed someone else's. And you'll miss what God had for you. And so at that company, it was called Blue Cross Blue Chill. But it changed its name to Care First. That's why I don't put my confidence in colors. That's why my messages are warning you from God. Don't operate like the word. Don't put your confidence in nothing other than the Lord. Now I have on black. Black clergy clothes are normally worn for few, but some wear white. But some schools, when you graduate with robes and caps, are black. What does this have to do with clergy? A lot of schools graduate with different color robes. And if you put your faith and trust in the outer appearance, like God warns you in the writing of James, you will lose what God can show you in the spiritual realm, worldly wisdom versus godly wisdom. Some professions train you to go by sight. You're trained that way to go by sight. And when that profession becomes a part of the body, they haven't shaken off some of that training. Faith is not always sight. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And when you take your worldly profession and bring it into the kingdom, that's secularism. That's not holiness. That's how you get a world view versus a God view. The same when people come into the body of Christ and there's no change. Because you're treating them the same way the world treats them. And not the wisdom that God wrote in the writing of James, inspired by the Holy Spirit on how we should treat them. We are to love them and respect them in the love of God. Not to edify them as lords because of what you think they have from an individual value. That's why the Bible says, don't do that. Don't be adorned in a spirit of impartiality. Now, there's a lot of demonic spirits operating in the flesh. And they don't even know it's operating within them. They are in such a stronghold, trying to propel an agenda that's been imparted into them that they don't even know the truth. 
That's why the Bible calls it blindness. Eyes but can't see, ears but can't hear. What the Spirit of God says, his wisdom. That's why fast and prayer is necessary. The one thing that God taught his disciples before they could minister, they had to learn those elements first. Because if they didn't, they would be overconsumed by spirits that were controlled. That's why the Bible says, are ye not then partial in yourself and are become judges of evil thoughts? He's addressing why you do what you did. When you have respect unto them, Based on what you think they can offer you. Based on what you think they have. Impartiality is not wisdom from God. And in the same writing of James, he gives you a validation, a demonstration, a proclamation, a confirmation, a declaration and an exhortation of God's wisdom. And James 3, 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first peer. Is peer. Then peaceful. Gentle. And easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness, verse 18, is sown in peace of them that make peace. You can't make peace when you're operating in the realm of the adversary and enmity with God. You can't have peace with yourself. You can't have peace with others. Because you become strife and contention within your own self. Everything you do is strife and contention. Because you're out of the will, out of the order of God. His wisdom that's from above impartiality not inclusivity impartiality God is not including everything so when Hollywood comes to the church the church don't become Hollywood That's why God says how we are to conduct ourselves. Respect, love, truth. Not evil thoughts to influence judgment. Not to encourage to encourage partiality, but it encourages us to embrace a spirit of impartiality and treat all with dignity and respect, irrespective of their external circumstance. And respect is truth. 
about God. And the adversary will never tell you truth about God. And it's the truth that will set you free. That's why many can't be set free. They become bound, entangled, entrapped in deception and lies. Instead of the truth of the Spirit of God. That's why God says it's better to put your confidence in God. So that when all this stuff happens, you're not following humanity if they fall, if they disappoint you, because God is never going to come off that throne until he's ready to destroy the earth. And God will never disappoint you if you want his will, if you submit to him. And if you have the wisdom from above, that his wisdom is far greater than any wisdom that you could ever hold. And it's the truth that makes the difference in lives of believers. They believe deception for so long that when God came, he showed them truth. He showed them who the Lord is and the truth of who he is. And many can't even show the truth of God's love, the truth of God's will, the truth of God's character. Because you're living in deception. And you control by self-will that has nothing to do with God's will. And then you have the audacity to project that onto others' lives and influence those that could not have ever entered into it had you not been used for a vessel of unrighteousness to do it. And then you can't accept truth because your mind is controlled by the adversary. That's the battlefield of the mind. Who controls the mind? That's why he says, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus, not the mind of the world. So you'll think like the world and not receive the wisdom of God. Let's bring this to close. James knew so well with this yeah, because he knew evil thoughts will influence your judgment. You will overlook what you know to be true to try to receive selfish will and agendas. You will criticize others, but you will never discipline your own. And then you'll criticize others. And then when it happens to your own, you'll change on God. Because of your own influence, will, desire over God. If we are sacrifices to God, it's not our choice to determine God's righteousness is our choice to follow God's righteousness. He determines what is right. We don't. 
That's why you can't bridge some things we do. It makes it secularism. You accept what God is not accepting. And then you become part of the father of liars. Being a vessel of unrighteousness. Instead of a vessel of honor. Because you speak not the truth. You speak being influenced for your selfish reasons. And truth never comes forth. God is truth. And he wants you to live in truth, not deception. That's the superiority of divine bodies. Truth. Truth is the superiority of God's divine bodies. You are either divided by two things, the adversary or God. You either believe truth or you believe the adversary. And isn't it strange when Jesus gathered his disciples and he was establishing the church and he was establishing Christianity, a new understanding of theology with his blood covenant. He was not following the ways of the world. Nor did he blend the ways of the world. He spoke truth. But he did it in love and dignity. But he spoke truth. He wasn't trying to befriend the world to gain any position of authority. He wasn't trying to be exalted by the world. He didn't need your exhortation for wrong motives, personal agendas, because he loved you and he cared for you and he wanted you to exalt the Father. For when you exalt the Father, you exalt him. Because he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he never promised you something like the world does. He promised you something far greater than the world. And say, all these worldly things shall be added. For I know all things. And I've given you all things that pertains to life and God. So he warned, be careful how you treat people based on how you perceive what they have. That's why people with money can control you and you lose your mind. Because you're more interested in the money instead of the value and moral of God. And you become corrupt. That's why he gave the wisdom. That's why Satan will display certain wealth to certain things, to lure you, knowing it's destruction. You never see the future, that Jesus knows the future. That he tries to prevent you from going down those paths.
because you don't want truth. And you don't want people to tell you the truth. That's why the Bible calls it itchy ears. Itchy ears. Adam and Eve had itchy ears. God said no. Satan said yes. They chose what they wanted to do. A yes over the no. And the no was their protection, their provision, and their righteousness in God. The yes was destruction unto death. And Satan will never tell you the destruction unto death. Because if he does, you won't do it. So he'll lie to you. Make you think that it won't lead to death. And so they led themselves down a death road. And they were kicked out of the garden. The same way people tell you, you're going to make it in the kingdom. When God says you won't. If you consistently follow these paths and rebel against me. But you'll put your faith and trust in humanity that will change the theological understanding and to their ideologies, and you will put your life in their hands over God. What books versus experience have to do with anything? Stop getting involved in people's personal agendas. Jesus was never concerned about Pharisees versus him. He followed God's will for his life. And the Pharisees would have gotten the truth if they would have wanted truth. Jesus didn't put his eyes on the Pharisees. He kept his eyes on the Father. The wiser one keeps your eyes on God and depend on God. Not the creation, but the creator. Now, I love to preach. Always have loved to teach and preach. Love a lot of things. And wouldn't have never known except God gave me the opportunities to know it. When I worked for a company and raised funds, doing fundraising through jogging and running and walking, we're, we're a health insurance company. We're going to project health. We're not going to project another lifestyle. We're projecting healthy lifestyle. And they covered a lot of Olympics people. You would see it all over TV, Blue Cross and Blue Shield at the Olympics. That is now care first. And we got the chance to meet a lot of people who had Olympics, gold medals and things. And they may open up their small businesses to offer their Olympic services. and enhance where they came from. 
and raise funds for research. Now, granted, this is a private industry. There is a difference. Because sometimes you can move people to positions, but you can't take what's in them out. And they'll carry that over into other places. Their ideology. Private doesn't operate that. And all of those who were private understand when you find yourself in other environments, how others operate. You know the difference. There is definitely a different. I and mean, the difference is because of how people feel, they have to try to acquire and hold on. And we don't operate that way. We're promoted based on our performance, our review. I used to write reviews, I used to evaluate, I used to promote, I used to hire. There's a difference. We're not threatened by being cross-trained. We're not insecure about somebody trying to take your job. We view cross-training different. That gives you an opportunity to be promoted into other areas. It makes life easier. See, your experiences can cause negativity with others when you have insecurity. Thinking somebody won't what you got. That's the problem Jesus had. They thought Jesus wanted what they had. And Jesus was godly. The superiority of God is new. You are lower than what I had. So you can't even proceed correctly. That's why the Bible says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. See, God isn't saying anything just to be saying. He's projecting wisdom. But will you take wisdom? Or will you lean towards your own understanding? Let me bring this to point. So in volunteering... to do some walking and running to fundraise for the company that I worked for. The first time I did it, I loved it. I met people from all organizations and we're talking. Many were Christians and we're just raising money. But we receive benefits from it. Sometimes you can volunteer and do things and God will benefit you for what you're doing. You have the right motives. You appear. You are genuine. You don't have any under motive. No impartiality. You're not being partial. You're showing impartiality. You're not doing it to benefit you. 
Nothing we did to raise money was for self. We did a cancer walk. None of us had cancer. We weren't doing it for self. Be careful of those who promote their own agendas, but they won't do nothing for you. But they'll promote their own agendas. That's not peer. That's not impartiality. That's a motive. That's impure. We will raise money for many things. I went out in Virginia, did an age run. Now these was over 25 to 30 years ago. That's when people didn't mind volunteering. That had nothing to do with personal reasons. But when you get a group to bring their personal impurity, then it becomes the fire. Jesus saw that when he was feeding the multitude. They were there to hear from God. But God knew they needed physical nutrient. So he gave them physical. And then he gave them spiritual. And when it was time for the spiritual, those who only came for physical got up and left. Impure motives. And they could never receive what they could have received from God. Because God knows what's pure and what's impure. Let me bring this to culture. Keep your desire for El Roi to watch over and see you. You know God sees everything. You know God knows everything. And your desire should be to the praise and glory of him. Your desire to be pleasing in his sight. Above all. And you don't have to come entangled in others that don't know how to stop, think, and turn around from their ways that the Bible says you must do. If my people who are called by my name would pray and seek my face and turn from their ways, I'll hear them. He didn't say that to the unsaved. He said my people. Great foresight. He knew what his people would be doing. The Bible is written to believers, not unbelievers. Satan believes, but he don't obey. He know there's a God. He was with God. God created him. He knows truth, but he will never tell you truth. Think about it. And I'm going to close with this. If someone is doing wrong, they don't want you to do right. They want you to do what they're doing. They won't tell you, don't do this. It's wrong. They'll say, come, let's do it together. If someone has a problem with you, 
They want everybody they deal with to have a problem with you. They won't say, this is just between me and them. Stay out of it. Because that's not how humanity is. Unless you appear before God, then you'll respond and act that way because you'll have the superiority of the divine God to lead you into righteousness. That's what God meant when he said, fear holiness, true holiness. What do you think holiness means? He's not talking about sexual connotations only. He's talking about how you interact with one another. Some of you are so limited in your thinking because you picked up the ways of the world. And you will not submit to God's way. That's why a woman could be living for God or a man could be living for God and you want to think something wrong with them. Because they're not acting like the ways of the world. And I'll leave that alone to make you think while you're in what you're in. The devil hangs and not God. When you have to be accused of what you're not because you won't receive and respond the way of the world because you decide to live for God and Christians become a part of it. What has happened to their mind? It's not the mind of God. as the superiority of your divine God. Desire El Roi, the God to see. The devil is busy. And I don't have time for the devil. And I don't waste my time with devil's word. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, we honor you, we love you. That you know your motives. You know you appear. You know the working is the Holy Spirit. And some are in strong homes. Deception. Self will. Jesus say one thing, the Pharisees say another. They'll follow the Pharisees over Jesus and lack kingdom understanding. Because the Pharisees could not receive from God, they weren't peer. They didn't want to know truth. They were jealous and controlled and compelled by jealousy. So they plotted to get rid of him when he didn't want nothing they had. It was beneath them and he would have offered and gave them so much more but the adversary they believed and could not comprehend. They had far more to gain from Jesus. Than they could have ever realized. The spiritual guidance. The superiority of God. If you. Live by the spirit. 
If you live in the spirit, you'll be led by the spirit. You'll desire the spirit above all. And the spirit will pull you back and keep you from paths of unrighteousness. He communicates to those that are his. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for this message that I didn't prepare, but you did. Thank you for the direction you took. It. Because you know these messages are serious. You know they're revealing truth. And you know we're living in perilous time of deception, corruption, but you still are superior of all. You're incorruptible. And so we can be also. If we trust you beyond humanity. And if we seek from you and not from this world. So, Father, thank you for your patience. And thank you, God, for your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. The superiority of divine God. Let El Roha, the God, see you that rewards. Let the God that rewards see you. For it is your heavenly father that rewards. Amen, amen, amen. 